Scott and Jacob Wall and his own there. Two to chance now for James Gomez. Lots in the big hands for Johnny Mooney and Rathkey Road. And Rathkey will come away with this one. We'll give you a quick check of the games. Rathkey has possession of his own 21 metre line. It's Johnny Mooney and goals for the back line of Jack Hennessy, Audrey Powell and Shane Oregon. Half, half back line, Matthew Chief, Matthew McGee. Larry Brady is coming for Paul Roy just before the score. Adam Shanahan takes up the half back line for Rathkey. Midfield is Matthew Morrison coming down. Gadley coming away with the ball once more. Half forward line, Patrick Wilmot, all the time. Barry Cole, Mike, Barry Cole. Two forward line, Andrew White, Keith Shaw, and Mike Elliott. Gadley in possession just outside the Rathkey of 45, all the way back down. He's got a good look to make it again. It's coming to the ball in there. It's a shooting opportunity here for Gadley. Could be the first point of the game. A decent effort from Gadley. Gadley's going to score with all the seeds. Yeah, quite a good point for the seeds there, Jonathan. Jamie was, he dropped in shot the first one, he certainly made no mistake. This, this, this man is, is a very good young footballer, and he played it quite a little ball in the half back line, but they, they had to be moved forward this year. And, and, uh, he was one of those players that's adapted it to the lead game, and as you can see that, but he
here. Sharton lines this one up. And Sharton has leveled things here, Matt. Five and a half minutes gone, a point apiece. Yeah, um, it, it, you're right. You flagged it. it. It was a difficult enough kick, particularly for a right-footed kicker. Um, it, it should be meat and drink if he was a left-footed kicker. But he, he made it his own. Only just, mind you, from what we could could see here. But 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 it's a leveller, and Keen Sharton is that kind of player that that he will punish those to, from those kind of distances and even from further out. That's a great catch by John Kearns. These it was John Kearns coming out from full forward to take that catch, and win the mark. And it's James Ryan now moving the ball forward for Galbally. Galbally in possession now comes all the way back to Liam Casey as Galbally look to build up an attack here. Into Jamie Marcy, who scored their only point of the game thus far. Marcy now holding on to the ball, holding on to position. Eventually leaves it off to Michael Donovan. And Donovan now looking to take on a couple of players. He beats Barry Cohn with ease. And it's Donovan, very hard man to catch when he gets going. It's a certain foul. The referee, Jason Mullins, doesn't give a foul. Strange one in my eyes anyway. But it's Rack Heal either way coming away with the ball. And now it's Patrick Sheen, their captain. He leaves the ball off to Podrick Power and Power. As um, Andrew White here, all on his own over on the far side here in the Gaelic grounds. Six, nearly seven minutes gone here of this intermediate football championship final. That's one point apiece between Rakeel and Galvez. Rakeel on the attack now with Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell gives the ball inside to one of his full forward members, but on that occasion it was Owen Kelly. He leaves it off to O'Grady. Darrow O'Grady back to Kelly and indeed back inside to Owen O'Donnell once more. O'Donnell now with the luminous orange boots manages to find it away to O'Grady. And then again back to Andrew White. White, 45 metres from the Galbally goal. Leaves the ball off to Barry Coleman. Coleman with one into Shorten. Shorten had it. Then he lost it. But still a chance for Rakeel to come away with the ball with Mikey Marcy. And Marcy does well to even have any chance of winning that ball and give it the ball back to Patrick Sheehan. Sheehan inside to Shorten. Shorten looking to fashion a shooting opportunity. It's on his left foot. It's his weaker of the two feet. It's tailed. Set it out far from the left-hand post. Didn't come back enough, Matt, but... We're going to have a free. Shorten was fouled before for a tug back. And Matt, another chance for Keen Shorten. Another good build up for Rakeel. On several occasions, did well to keep that move going. Yeah, you were saying there, just, just to um, roll back a small bit um, about the foul on what we perceive from here to be a foul on, on, on Mike Dunneman. I, I think, in defence of the referee, he was very near the scene of the action. And he saw exactly what happened. Now, this is. is, is, is um, slightly more difficult in that it's further out and again he's taking with the right foot and it got there he got it i think he got it more convincingly actually than, than the last one but but Raquel prepared to be patient now they have a fairly stiff breeze against them now this is something that galbley playing against the breeze in the first half may be well prepared for because you will recall in the semi-final with palace green there was a storm and Galbally played it against, against it in the first half and turned over just a point down. And I think they probably surprised um, a pri surprised uh, Palace on that particular night because they did not retreat into a defensive shell as you would expect to, to, to defend um, against the Breeze. They, they, they actually took the game to Palace Green. Now, they're not doing it to the same extent yet tonight, but of course, they're, they're not being allowed to do so. But the breeze, the breeze is not as strong. But you have to admire the patience of, 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 um, of Red Keel and their building, build up and the way they're moving it through the hands. And I suppose a lot of that is credit to Killian Fair, who, who, whose reputation as a coach is, is, is rapidly growing. And, and like. This man has, has, has seen it all, like he, back in his native cavern through London and in, more recently with Trump, Trump Bradford. And he, he has won county, medal, county singer medals with Cavan Gales, with St. Brendan's in London, and more recently with Trump Bradford. A very, very experienced performer, very, and um, a really, really fastly rising coach. It's um, two points to one here to Rakeel after nearly 10 minutes of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final. There's Galbley on the attack once more as James, Co James Cummins in possession again. He leaves the ball off in front of him. The corner forward, Jerk Quinlan. Quinlan now looking to fashion a shooting chance. That's going to tail to the left and wide. As Matt was just saying, we're going to have um, a blood sub on here for Rakeel. It's their captain, Patrick Sheen, who has been forced off, as you may have seen a couple of moments ago. And on for him is Dean Moan. Dean wearing number 16, but it's going to be a, a, a Rakeel kick out now with Johnny Mooney to take. 
Patrick Wilmot in front of us moving, making good movement for him but it's a straight kick out and it's going to be more possession here for Rakil who started this game very brightly out to Darrow Grady now and so Grady gives it back inside to Wilmot Wilmot who's seen a lot of the ball in these early stages early opening 10 minutes leaves the ball off to O'Donnell Wilmot makes himself a bail again he's going to be fouled foul is committed there by David Cusson he's going to get a word in the air from Jason Mullins it's only a short word but it's going to be another chance Matt O'Callaghan for Keen Shorten he's shown what he can do from place balls twice already <laughs> they keep making it harder for him with each free but again given what he's done the first two given the fact that he's had he has a fairly stiff breeze within his advantage it's a chance he may may well get it, it, it's a third one in in terms of angle from the goal in the exact same position but the distance is getting longer it's it's the, it's the furthest out of the three now he's I suppose he's a f- good five yards you must remember Ger Ryan almost got caught the last one so this this will be very interesting he needs to get more purchase on this one the, the last one just got over the bar it's short and once more he's definitely got more purchase he's had more a better connection with that than any of the previous two and Raquel now into three points to one lead over Galbally in this intermediate football championship final brought to you on SportingLimerick.com 12 minutes played Matt and you have to be impressed by Raquel's start yeah <coughs> very impressed um, they're, 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 um, they're, 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 they've been very very lively and um, they, they have been sure footed with their passing and well able, well able to keep ball and like Galbally I'm not able to, to um, um, you know, force him into, in, in, into error, and certainly in terms of physicality, you would have to say it's it's advantage Galbally. But I suppose in the wide spaces of, of, of the the Gaelic grounds, young fresh legs like this, and young fellas full of running, and this is what Raquel have, and they are full of running. Um, the trick will be to, to maintain it for 60 minutes. Indeed, it will. As Galbally on the attack here, it's going to be a foul on John Kearns maybe 50 metres from goal it's going to be taken quickly it's a poor enough pass though and Srak he'll come away with the ball through Jack Hennessy Hennessy has options he gives it inside to Adam Shannon it's going to go all the way back to Johnny Mooney as a restart in an attack with Barry Coleman here taking the ball inside his own 14 metre line he's got up to the 45 metre line without any challenge whatsoever as Galbally funnel back and here comes Patrick Wilmot again we've already mentioned Wilmot in commentary a number of times already seen a lot of the ball here in the opening 13 minutes of this final and it's got Rat Keel over the far side with Andrew White perfectly happy to take his time with his build up and move the ball eventually but it's, it's a ball in eventually but it's straight down the throat of a Galbally de- defender and it's Galbally come away with it now but under pressure from Rat Keel, but it's Galbally Zone O'Donnell's pass in that time attempted ball into Keane Shorten but it's Galbally will come away with James Ryan now gives it out to his midfield partner that's David Cusson Cusson on the run now and it's up up and said to Mark Quinlan Quinlan with the ball he doesn't have any options in front of him there's Quinlan so he's going to have to go it alone he's doing a good job of it under pressure from Owen O'Donnell so far it's Quinlan eventually with the shot that's gone very very well to the left and very much wide Matt and fairly indicative of the first few minutes here the opening quarter where Mark Quinlan made a good run but he's zero options in front of him. No, that's exactly it, John. And no options. Contrast that with Raquel. When when there's a player on the run, there, there's 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 sometimes one, two, and three showing, and there's 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 a player very very often on on on, on the shoulder. Mark Quinlan was left with no choice whatsoever but to kick from distance, kick from an awkward angle, and you know he spectacularly missed. But no fault to the guy. Um, it, it, it was that. We have something, a threat here for Galbally. We do indeed, it's a goal chance. Here's a brilliant goal from John Kearns. In fact, it's James Cummins with the goal, I think, Matt, is it? It's, it's hard to see the Galbally numbers. We'll just confirm that. It looks like James Cummins from here at the moment. We'll check that in a second. Either way, it was a quick free taken by Galbally. Ball worked into Cummins, and Cummins turned his man. Beautiful left-footed shot into the corner, Matt. That's just the Philip that Galbally needed. That that is that is the Philip, and this is what they did in the semi-final as well. They went down and got an early goal, and 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 they rocked um, Palace Green. It now looks that that, that um, the initiative has and the momentum has swung very much with Galbally. Of course, the, can they can they drive on now? But certainly, Raquel looked for for a moment or two that, as if they're rocked by by the goal. It's James Ryan now on the attack for Galbally. Ryan now. Eventually brought back for a free. Referee Jason Mullins playing advantage. 
But Matt, it's, it's, it's a great fill-up, as we mentioned, for Galilee. A badly needed one, as there'll be a break in play here now. A couple of players injured, and one of them is Jerk Quinlan from the Galilee side. Seems to be holding the shoulder, but up to that moment, Raquel had been dominating. That goal came from absolutely nowhere. It came from absolutely nothing, and, and uh, uh, Raquel were playing all the football. They were putting all the good moves together, and we had just been critical of, of, of Mark Quinlan not having options. And um, suddenly now there's a spring in Galbley step. They have g- g- gone back down. Um, uh, what they didn't do for the first quarter of an hour, um, Raquel, they fumbled. In, 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 that, in, in that particular situation and now we have a Galbally free now it's a difficult free into the wind um, Gary McCarthy is a very very accomplished free taker um, and a lot of experience um, right up through the edges uh, as a free taker but this one John is from distance and it's into the breeze he's decided to take it short as Matt was saying there it's back to McCarthy again here shooting chance he's trying to get one for himself eventually leaves the ball off it's Galbley now going to be patient with it in fact they don't it's a fairly aimless effort in the end from Jamie Morrissey needless chance there if Galbley should have been more patient but either way it's Raquel coming away with the ball it's Adam Shanner has a man in space over on that far side and it's going to be Andrew White trying to launch another attack here for Raquel White decides to come in field and he fights Patrick Wilmot Wilmot now just around midfield and we'll come all the way over to this right hand side it's Patrick Sheehan of course went off five or six minutes ago with a blood sub was replaced by Dean Moan but as you can see he's back on the field as again Wilmot works the ball out to Andrew White and over the far side again here from a Raquel point of view it's full back Podrick Powers come out of that position it's the Owen O'Donnell O'Donnell with a shooting chance it's a very tricky angle for Owen O'Donnell but that's a fantastic score and we're all square here again in the Gaelic rounds Galbally 1-1 and Raquel four points Matt stunning score from Owen O'Donnell an excellent score, and I, I suppose in terms of the goal they conceded, it, it, it's an it's an excellent response, and and and, and Raquel will, will, will be delighted with it. He just looked up and he, he judged it to perfection, and of course he he, he had the breeze in his favour, but you know he still had a bit of work to do. What was it? It was possibly 35 metres out, way out on the left, but for a right-footed kicker. He, he, he certainly nailed it kick out there from Joe Ryan in the Galbally goal but it's again it's Ratkeel coming out with it free awarded them in this occasion it's going to be taken quickly by Barry Coleman Coleman looking for Keane Shorten chance inside Shorten is hit late referee Mullins plays away as Galbally that will eventually come out with it all square here in the Gaelic Crowns 18 and a half minutes nearly played of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final brought to you on SportingLimerick.com it's Galbley now trying to move the ball forward. Good turn there from cornerback Tom Davern, captain in this Galbley side. Comes into James Ryan, out of vastly experienced James Ryan. And it's going to be another attack. Good run from Mark Quinlan. We've seen him do this already tonight. That's Quinlan on the run once again. The last time he went up, he's no options in front of him. This time he's two or three players ahead of him. But Quinlan still goes under pressure from Darrell O'Grady, wearing number 20 in the Raquel side. Has to come back to James Ryan does Quinlan and Ryan brings it over the left hand side here to Liam Casey the centre back for Galbally Casey looking to take off and run he's a bit of space for Casey to run to shooting opportunity for Liam Casey and that's a superb score from Liam Casey very good build up in fact it's gone to the right and wide it looked for all the money from our angle in the commentary box Matt O'Callan that had gone over the bar but uh, it's been waved to the left and wide I, 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 I thought it had actually gone over the bar and I'd say Liam Casey thought it had gone over the bar because he had that satisfied look about him when he, when, when, when he turned away but um, it's John Hurley that, that's the umpire down there and John is an experienced official and um, like um, it, it obviously was wide it's actually hard to judge it um, it's hard to judge it from, from the angle judge it with certainty from the angle I think this this free now is after being moved forward, possibly for verbals. It seems to have been. It's going to be another chance. Raquel kind of deciding what they're going to do. It's going to be taken short either way. Barry Coleman giving the ball all the way out to Andrew White. In fact, it's not Andrew White, sorry. It's Podrick Power moving forward again into Owen O'Donnell. O'Donnell just put over a superb score and he's looking dangerous again here. O'Donnell fashions himself a shooting chance. Another effort from O'Donnell. This one definitely looks to be good again. It's another fine score from Owen O'Donnell on the Raquel side. Galbley had been warned just moments ago about his shooting ability and Matt, they didn't take heed of that warning. 
No, it's it, it's one two from Owen O'Donnell. They were essentially both both were in, in ex- practically exactly the same position. It it, it, it was a copy book, but certainly um, the players around him got the ball to him, and like th- th- that's terribly important as we saw in the senior final on Sunday uh, when Bally Landers were able to get the ball to the finishers in the first half. It it it, it, it paid dividends, and certainly. Um, it, that, that is what Red Keel are doing at the moment. But they are two excellent points by Owner Donald. Of course, Owner Donald is a survivor from the 2013 side. Um, he was a very young player at that stage, and he, uh, he obviously now has gathered a lot of experience since. It's Mark Quinlan with an attempted shot there for Galbally. It was brilliantly blocked down by Adam Shanner. But it's Galbally still on the attack. It's worked all the way back to Liam Casey. Red Keel will be wary of him after the last run. He made right through the middle of their defence. The end of shot went wide, but either way, it's Galbally on the attack again, and it's James Cummins' effort. It was a very well missed hit. It was a very poor enough shot. It nearly fell to Galbally full forward, man. On that occasion, it was Jerk Winlin who looked to be getting towards the ball. Didn't make it, Matt. And it was a poor enough effort of a shot. Nearly broke from. Would have been a goal chance. As Rack Hill come back, we'll get back to Matt O'Callaghan in a couple of moments after his attack. Patrick Sheehan with the ball, moving it forward along this right hand side here. As Racky look to, to add to their lead, they currently lead five points to 1-1. One, one. It's Patrick Wilmot as we, who on, on possession for Racky. It's given to his captain, Patrick Sheen. They worked the ball back out to Owen Kelly, and it's going to come all the way to this left-hand side. It's worked, paid dividends the last couple of attacks. It's Podrick Power with it. Power gives it into Shorten. Tightly marked, but Shorten loses his footing. He manages to keep onto the ball. Gives the ball, eventually comes back to Andrew White. Shooting chance for Andrew White. It's a high one from Andrew White, but it's a good one again. And Raquel going to a six points to 1 1 lead, Matt, with 22 minutes played here. We'll just go back to that score in a moment, but Matt, you wanted to say something about that, that last Galbally attack. It, 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 it just bore out what, what we had said earlier that when James Cummins was in possession there, that was the only option that, 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 that was really on. And it nearly came off. Had, had he not undercooked it, um, certainly Raquel were going to be in trouble they were exposed because he had got in and they just got a hand to it to, de- to deflect it away but again that's an excellent point and that's three in a row first class top quality points from, from the Raquel forwards Andrew White played a lot of very experienced player a young player but a um, very experienced player at underage level and Mark Quinlan on the run here for Galbally, but his hand pass, his runs are causing problems, just his finishing at times, would it be a pass or a shot, is just letting him down a little bit, as Raquel come away again, it's Barry Coleman with possession, under pressure from David Cusson, Coleman manages to give it inside, and it's Paul Sheehan, the Raquel captain who has possession now, they're going to work it out this left hand side again, and it's Andrew White to Wilmot, Wilmot O'Donnell on his outside, but Wilmot decides to hold on to the ball on this occasion, he gives it back inside to Andrew White. White, looking at his options, decides to give it long. He finds Keane Shorten with that long delivery. Shorten with a shooting chance. He decides to give it across a goal chance, maybe. But there was a chance if Owen Kelly was able to get possession, but he was brilliantly, brilliantly intercepted. And I think that's John Kearns all the way back there, Matt. And it's Galbally coming away with the ball again. Indeed, it was John Kearns, and it's Galbally on the attack. And it's... Jor Quillen with possession for him. He manages to give it off and then takes it back again and eventually comes to Cusson. Then back again to Jor Quinlan. Good defending from Raquel. They're stopping that attack, that movement. Done well to stop on that occasion. It's Jamie Morrissey now for Galbally. Up against Patrick Sheehan, the Raquel captain. Morrissey with not many options. It's been a feature of this first half from a Galbally point of view. Not many options in attack. Certainly not enough. Comes all the way back to David Cusson. Cusson looks for Cummins on his right shoulder and it's Cummins on the run. James Cummins now with the ball. In fact, that's Michal Donovan, Michael Donovan with the ball. As Matt O'Callaghan mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to see the numbers on these Galbally jerseys, but we're doing our best from the commentary box at the moment. Mark Quinlan, that's certainly Mark Quinlan with the ball. We've seen him run tirelessly in this opening 24, nearly 25 minutes. Gives the ball off to James Ryan. Ryan now with a chance. Man on his out, out on his right hand side. It's not the best of passes from James Ryan. There's still a shooting opportunity. It's a good touch. Chance comes back out to James Ryan. Shooting chance for James Ryan. It's a decent enough angle for James Ryan, but it's tailed to the right and wide. And Matt, it was a very patient build-up from Galbally, but ultimately was fine defending from Raquel in the end. That put, put the shooting man under pressure. It had to be, it had to be patient, and, and the shooting man had to be under pressure because for that entire passage of play, there were no fewer than 13 
rack keel players behind, well, inside their own 65 and, 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 and working on the defensive strategy. They're, they're defending on numbers. Now, that can be a high risk strategy in that it can, it can be energy sapping, but it's certainly frustrating the Galbally forward so far. Another chance for Rakeel as Matt's describing that last Galbally attack. It's gone to the left and wide, and great chance for Ode Ode O'Donnell to score his third point of the game. Initially, it was a great catch from Barry Coleman from Johnny Mooney's kick out. Great run after the catch from Coleman, laid it inside to O'Donnell, but O'Donnell surprisingly, given the fact that it was straight in front of the goals, and especially given the fact that he'd scored two from dip more difficult angles before that, as Galbally come on the attack once more. It's Michael Donovan on the attack for them, down that right-hand side, faced by Barry Coleman as Raquel funnel back once more it's Donovan on the run Donovan now faced by two Raquel defenders and not for the first time as Matt O'Callaghan just pointed out it's Raquel come away with the ball and it's been a feature of the game this opening 26 and a half minutes their ability to counter attack it's Kevin Shanahan with the ball from Raquel he's the man who lays it off to Andrew White White now plays the ball down looking for Owen Kelly but it's Galbally come away with it and it's James Ryan gives it to Casey Jack Liam Casey coming away with the ball for Gadley, gives the ball out to Tom Daver, comes all the way back to James Ryan. Ryan hand pass into Mark Quinlan. Quinlan, as we've seen, as we've mentioned, is only too happy to run with the ball in hand. He's under pressure there. He's definitely been pulled back by Mikey Morrissey on that occasion. It's going to be a free to Gadley, Matt. And Mark Quinlan, to be fair to him, has done a serious amount of running in this first half. Mark Quinlan has, and th this is a guy that played 60 minutes for Gareth Blan on, on Saturday in, 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 in the county final. Um, but Raquel, are, we spoke about him being patient up front. They're patient at the back because they have numbers at the back, and they're, they're, what, what they're hoping, of course, and what they're succeeding to do is, is, is force the turnover and break its speed because they, they have speed, speedsters um, who, who, who can hurt Galbally, and they're, they're drawn Galbally with, with him now. Gary McCarthy has this one sent. Wide. It's a good chance for Gary McCarthy. It was a tough one into the breeze, though it has to be said, and that's just tail to right. He put it fairly high up into the air on that occasion, but it's another missed chance for Galbally. And with nearly 28 minutes played, it's Rackheel leading them six points to 1 1 in this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final. Brought to you live on sportinglimerick.com from the Gaelic grounds as Johnny Mooney gets play underway with a kick out that reaches his own 65 yard line. It's 65 meter lines. John Kearns have got a hand to it. He fisted the ball, hoping it would fall to one of his teammates. It hasn't. It's gone over the near the Mackie stand sideline here in the Gaelic grounds. It's going to be Shane Horrigan to take that. It's a good ball across from Shane Horrigan, but they nearly lost possession, but they managed to hold on to it through Barry Coleman. Coleman then back to Patrick Sheen. It's been a feature of Rackheel's play. They're very, very happy to move the ball from left to right or right to left, whatever it takes their fancy at the time. As Adam Shanahan now gives it back to his, his full-back, Podrick Power, Power has Andrew White outside him. He decides to go along with it down the line in the first instance. He eventually gives it back to Andrew White, and again they'll work it across the field. Darrow O'Grady is his option over on this side. It's a beautiful pass to Darrow O'Grady. O'Grady, big man, beats John Kearns with ease, and again gives it into Shane Horrigan. Shane Horrigan is fouled. Clear foul from Liam Casey. His arms around his hips. It's going to be one minute of added time here. We've 29 minutes played, so there's two minutes left in this first half. Keane Shorten's coming all the way out to take this one. It's going to be an attempt from, from 45 metres. Jason Mullins has brought that free forward again, maybe, as Matt mentioned earlier, for a bit of verbals. In fact, he hasn't. It's Keane Shorten was trying to get a couple of metres, I think, Matt. In the end, it's going to be Shorten. He was looking to give it back 20, 25 metres back to Barry Coleman, who was let lingering around midfield there. It's going to be shortened from the ground though. The first three frees he's hit in this game have been from his hands. It's a fair old distance, 50 metres, even with the aid of a strong breeze here in the Gaelic grounds. It's Keane Shorten now looking to extend Rakeel's lead to three points. It's a fine strike from Shorten. And it's a fantastically struck free from Keane Shorten. His fourth free of the game, Matt. And we've mentioned each time he's lined up a free, it gets harder each time. I know this one was a 44 from 50 odd metres Matt and that's a cracking free that was a cracking free and un unusually which you, you, you see rarely these days is it, it, it was kicked off the ground but kicked off the ground with precision I have a sense that that Ger Fahey, the, the, the Galbally manager here, and his coach, John Dunnigan, they just can't wait to get their lads in because, because 
the, 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 the whole, the, the, they haven't established any sort of a pattern of any, any type of consistent pattern. Or they haven't found any sense of rhythm um, in, in the game so far. And I, I suppose the scoreboard doesn't lie um, because if you extrapolate the goal out of it, um, Rakil would have been in a much, much, much stronger position. But, but goals count and goals win, win, win matches. But certainly, apart from that goal, they, they haven't threatened to the extent. It's another long range attempt here from Galbally. And it's another attempt that's gone to the left and wide. And again, it's fantastic defending from Rakil. It has to be said, who have a couple of men down now. Patrick Wilmot, who's been very influential, certainly from a ball carrying point of view, in this first half. As Jason Mullins calls a halt to this opening half of this Limerick Intermediate Football Championship final here in the Gaelic Grounds. It's Raquel leading Galbally seven points to one one. Matt O'Callaghan. Where do where do back into this game? Well the, the, it's only three points. It, it, it's very doable. It's it, it it's very manageable. But I'm not so sure that it is that manageable with the way they have played. They have found no level of consistency at all through the game. And as I was saying to you there towards the end of commentary, if we extrapolate the goal out of it, um, you know, it's, it, it would be seven points to one. All right, it's seven points to four. And I suppose it's fair to say that, that does it fully reflect um, uh, the type of play and um, the approach of, of Red Keel? I would say it doesn't. Um, I, I, I would think that Galbally can count themselves somewhat fortunate to be within three points of, of, of um, Red Keel on, on what we have seen in the first half. Now, there was a strong breeze there, and Red Keel, particularly as the half wore on, funneled back in greater and greater numbers, and Galbally were becoming frustrated. And, and, and I think we, we highlighted it a, a, a couple of times dur during the commentary that um, the player in possession, the Galbally player in possession, had very few, or in some cases, no option. And um, like we saw it a couple of times, and it, totally unlike what, what we're seeing here with, with, with Red Keel, where, where they have their runners, where they have where they have the free man, the ball carrier, and, and the man in possession can look up. Sometimes there are more than one, there are two, there are three options. Um, now, th th this is it, 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 it's a high intensity strategy that <clears throat> that Raquel are bringing to the game. I suppose in many ways, it's an ideal evening for it. Ground conditions are perfect. The prevailing climate is cool. So, like, <clears throat> you, you would be able to sustain it. Um, what I feel about it is <clears throat> we've seen 31, 32 minutes of play, and normally in every half, a team gets, gets their period on top. I'd say, you, you could say in that first half, Galbally weren't on top for no more than three or four minutes, which was around the time of the goal and immediately afterwards and like the, there were signs that they were, they were breaking Red Keel's grip in the game but certainly Red Keel found their rhythm very very quickly again which is a good sign of a team mind you and and um, I, I think Galbally have a lot a lot of work to do in the second half it's doable I'm just looking there at their bench um, I'm, I'm just wondering Will, will they be tempted to make changes and, and, and what changes might they make? Could we see Kieran Hickey in, in, in the second half? Could we see Cahal Shanahan in, 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 in the second half? But looking at the configuration of, of, of the um, of, of the Galbally team all the defence apart from Mark Quinlan are the most experienced players in it and of course James Ryan James Ryan is very very experienced with, with, with another young player David Cusson but apart, apart from John Kearns the forwards are youngsters and um, uh, I, I, I'm just wondering um, do, you, do they need to bring in a seasoned head up there because um, we, we saw him running into blind alleys running out of options in, in the first half do they need to bring in somebody to steady it down? And like, as I said, I, I, I would be thinking of somebody like Kieran Hickey 
or possibly Jack Donovan bring him into the edge of the square and, and, and put the ball in there he's quite capable of causing a lot of problems or um, do they go for an experienced another experienced head like Owen Burke I don't know Galbley have a lot of th- a lot of thinking to do Ger Fahey and his, his coach um, John Dunnigan John, John Dunnigan is a Corkman um, from Mitchellstown a very very experienced coach um, who dipped his toes in the English league at one stage as a goalkeeper um, but he's, he's, a, he's a very renowned coach and, and, and has a track record uh, uh, as a coach they, they learn their keep over the next 10 minutes to come up with a plan to counteract Rack Gale as Matt O'Callaghan from the Weekly Observer, uh, Weekly Observer Vail Star said, it's all Rack in that first half and Galbley with it all to do. We'll be back for the second half shortly. <laughs>